All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about ballistics pendulums. I'll go through an example uh, to start with that has to do with my elk hunting rifle. And then we're going to switch over to something a little safer so that you guys can do a lab. Um, and I've got a couple examples, one involving a Nerf blaster, a second one involving a little uh, pea shooter. I shot a pea out of a um, straw. And so you guys will be making your own ballistic pendulum and then finding its muzzle velocity. So this is how, <clears throat> before we had chronographs and all this fancy electronics, how people would measure how fast a projectile is going, is they would shoot a bullet into a block of wood. And if they knew the mass of the projectile, the bullet, and they knew the mass of the block, they could figure out uh, how fast the bullet's moving. And so this is a, it ties in law of conservation, law of conservation of momentum. and law of conservation of energy so it kind of fits right in the units that we're we're working on this week it's a really cool example of physics um it, it gets really accurate results if you do these uh labs carefully and it really is how they used to determine the speed of of uh rifles and projectiles so um my hunting rifle that i hunt elk with it shoots a 180 grain bullet a lot of you don't know what grains are i didn't know until i started hunting but it's a way that they measure the mass of gunpowder and the mass of the actual bullet so 180 grains um, there's approximately 15 uh grains in a gram so 15 point i got the actual conversion four three four or two four grains per one gram that comes out to about 11.66 grams or 0 0.01166 kilograms. Okay, so the mass of the bullet, it's, uh, you know, a hundredth of a kilogram. And 2,500 feet per second, if you were to convert that to meters per second, that comes out to 762 meters per second. So I'm shooting that bullet into this block, and what's going to happen is this block is going to swing upward. These are just cables holding the block, so I'll get some kind of motion like this, okay? And it might even pivot uh, more, but um, it doesn't really matter as long as you kind of estimate where its center of mass is. So we're going to estimate its center of mass if it's a uniform density. There's its center of mass, there's the center of mass, and its change in height this right delta h that would be the the due to a change in potential energy so we're using the bullets kinetic energy to hit the pendulum there's a transfer of momentum okay and then after the transfer of momentum the energy gets converted from kinetic energy to potential energy and we'll go through that so uh, my question is what is delta h what is the change in height for this bullet Okay, and so this is a, a known velocity. Uh, this would be like a velo typical velocity that would be able to, um, you know, the, like a mass and a velocity that would be capable of uh, harvesting an elk. And so I'm giving you the velocity here and the mass, and you guys will solve for delta H. And then later we're going to go backwards uh, where you measure delta H and you can back out the velocity. That's more useful. Okay, but for this one, we'll start with this and we'll start with the conservation of momentum. So momentum is P. We, we give it a variable P. So the P of the system like at state one is equivalent to the momentum right as the bullet enters this block. Momentum has to be conserved. So the velocity of that system at state two has to be the same. Okay, so momentum at state one and momentum at state two are equal. And at momentum at state one would be our, our system is the bullet in the block. So I'll say um, P of bullet plus P block. That's the state one equals P combined. Okay, so that's when the bullet lodges itself into the wood. And so state one is two separate objects. State two, they're combined. And we can now break down what P means. Well, momentum, or P, is mass times velocity. So remember this, P equals mv. So that's our general formula. And what I'll say is, you know, the momentum of the bullet would be the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet 
the momentum of the block would be the mass of the block times the velocity of the block. So that's the left side of the equation. And then the momentum combined would be the combined mass. So bullet plus block times the velocity combined. <clears throat> now I know how fast the bullet's moving. So I know this one. And I know originally at state one, the block is not moving. So I know that its velocity is zero. Therefore, this whole term goes away. And then I can solve for the velocity of the combined objects, the bullet when it hits the um, block of wood. So uh, let's just simplify this. M bull times V bull equals M bull plus M block times V combined. And solving for the combined velocity, okay, V combined, I just would divide both sides by this stuff, right? Uh, the mass of the bullet or the total mass. So it would end up looking something like this. Mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet divided by mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. Okay. And so I know all these things. The bullet weighed 0 0.01166 kilograms and was traveling 762 meters per second divided by 0 0.01166 kilograms plus 3.9 kilograms. I know there's some sig fig issues when we're adding up, right? This really precise mass with the less precise mass, but we're just going to go with it. So, you know, combine the mass, this comes out to 3.91166 uh, kilograms. And then dividing 0 0.01166 times 762 divided by 3.91166. I get a combined velocity of 2.28. And the units, you see kilograms cancel, end up in meters per second. So this is kind of crazy. 762 meters per second is the velocity of the bullet. When it hits that really heavy block, 3.9 kilograms, the total mass is a little bit above 3.9 but the velocity slows down significantly because momentum has to be conserved. So because the, the object now has a ton of mass, its velocity has to be smaller to match up with the momentum of that bullet. Okay, so that's the combined velocity. And you're like, well, okay, why is that useful? Well, what happens to that block as it swings, it converts its kinetic energy to potential energy. So now we're gonna say, the kinetic energy of the block okay, is equal to the potential energy of the block. And I could say this is at the bottom of its swing. And this is at, oops, this is at the top of its swing. Um, another way to say it is the change in the kinetic energy as it goes from, so it's moving fast at the bottom and then it stops up at the top. That change in kinetic energy plus the change in height potential, gravitational potential, has to be zero. But solving for it, we just say the kinetic energy is being transferred to potential energy. And you can say the kinetic energy of, oh, and I should not say the block, I should say the combined system. Because the bullet is still lodged in the block as it swings, right? As soon as that bullet gets lodged in and it's moving, that whole system moves upward. So the kinetic energy would be one half mv combined, and this is also mass combined squared, equals m combined times g times delta h. So there's my uh, change in height that we can solve for. You'll notice, right, since the bullet and the block move up as a system, the mass cancels. And then solving for delta H to get this one by itself, right? I would say delta H is equal to, I'll move the G to the other side, 1 over 2G times V combined squared. And so if I want to know how high this would go, 
delta H would equal 1 over 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times, let's see, the velocity was 2.28 meters per second squared. And so typing this all in, 2.28 squared divided by parentheses, I'll put this denominator in parentheses, divided by 2 times 9.81. Oops. I get a change in height of 0 0.264, or round it, 265 meters. Which comes out, if you convert that to inches, I'm going to let Google do that. Or let's see, that's 26.5 centimeters divided by 2.54. That's 10.4 inches. So you shoot a elk bullet, okay, an elk round into a block of wood. That block of wood swings away and it increases in height by 10.4 inches. And so we know that. Uh, we can calculate that because we know the bullet's velocity. But what happens if you want to go backwards? So let me show you what the lab's going to be like. I'll solve another example with you. And then you guys, <coughs> your assignment for, for like early in the week is to come up with a ballistic pendulum that you can make. And then towards the end of the week, then you'll be actually analyzing your numbers and writing a little lab report. So um, let me pull this up. Hopefully this works. There we go. And then I got a... Actually, this one has no audio, so I should be good if I scroll around. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Now, you'll notice the dart fell out. But for all intents and purposes, it travels upward. Let me see if I can scroll through and show you. It travels upwards with the system. So there's the dart moving up. It fell out on the backswing. So this is very similar to the wood block that dart got embedded in the cup. I'll show you how I set the cup up in a few minutes. But let's just look at where this goes. So the center of mass of the cup let's say is uh, this mark. Oh, I don't know what how it's going to reference it. I'm going to put my finger on the screen and just track it, but there. And then the top peak, the center of mass looks like it's about here. So counting, that's one, two, three, four. So it increased by about four, maybe four and a quarter inches. So let's just go with four and a quarter. Um, I know you guys will be able to be more accurate. Again, I set this up. It was a little crooked. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I kind of slacked um, over spring break. So cut me some slack and uh, let's go with it. So 4.25 inches. The question is, how fast is that? What's the muzzle velocity? Muzzle velocity mean what's the velocity as it leaves my Nerf gun? How fast does a Nerf dart travel? Now, when I play it at full speed, it's really difficult to see the dart. So let's see. All right, and even when I slow it down, just these frames right there. It's like too fast to measure, but with this ballistic pendulum, we should be able to get it. So it, it went up 4.25 inches. And then here's some information for you. Um, let's see if I've got the masses. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so the mass of the dart was one gram. The mass of the system. So that's the dart and the cup. And everything, the whole ballistic pendulum as it swung upwards, the mass of the system was 10.88 grams. Okay, and then delta H, let's say delta H is 4.25 inches. And 4.25 times 2.54 divided by 100. That is 
0 0.108 meters. Okay. So let me see. Oh no, I just wrote those down. Let me hide that. There you go. We can also convert those to kilograms, but I'll show you it doesn't really matter um, if it's in kilograms or grams. So let's let's just go through and derive the equation that we're going to use. So remember we started with <coughs> uh, P1 equals P2, and this ends up being the mass of the dart times the velocity of the dart. The cup wasn't moving at the beginning of the video, so its momentum is zero. And then right when they combine this will be the mass of the system times the velocity of the system remember the mass of the system is the dart plus the cup but i just already had those combined anyways uh when i weighed it on my scale i actually physically just put the dart in the cup and weighed it so there's our conservation of momentum so what I can solve for, I origin or eventually want to know what's the velocity of the dart. So velocity of the dart is the mass of the system divided by the mass of the dart times the velocity of the system. So I just move this to the other side. Well, what's the velocity of the system? Well, this came from the law of conservation of energy. We said that the kinetic energy of the system equals the potential energy and this was the kinetic energy of the system at the bottom of the swing that's when it's moving the fastest is equal to the potential energy of the system at the top okay and so what we said was uh, one half m cis v cis squared equals m cis g delta h so mass is canceled <clears throat> and i measured delta h uh and i need to get this velocity of the system right so i need to solve for this variable so to solve for that first of all i'm going to multiply both sides by two and that cancels uh and then i would take the square root so the velocity of the system is equal to the square root of 2g delta h. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute that into the velocity of the system. So I know that the velocity of the dart is equal to, that's a lot, there you go. So we've got this nice formula, okay, that compares everything. So the mass of my system was 10.88 grams. And you're like, well, doesn't it need to be in kilograms? Here's the nice part. If you use the velocity or the mass of the system in grams and the mass of the dart in grams, those units cancel anyways. And it turns out if you did it in kilograms over kilograms or grams over grams, comes out with the same fraction or the same ratio, right? Just just different multipliers in there, but the units kind of cancel and work out anyways. Okay, times the square root of 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times delta H, which was 0 0.108 meters. Okay, so I type this all in. Uh, notice I get meters squared over second squared, and when I take the square root of that, I end up in meters per second. So 10.88 divided by 1 times 2, or times the square root, sorry, of 2 times 9.81 times 0 0.108. Close my parentheses. I got 15.84. We could just say 15.8 meters per second. And then converting that to feet per second or miles per hour, let's do it. 15.8 meters per second to feet per second. That's 52 feet per second or miles per hour. That's uh, 35 miles per hour.
So the Nerf dart, because it could push that up about four and a quarter inches, okay, with the masses that I knew, it, it, it was moving as it shot out of the gun, it was moving about 35 miles per hour, 52 feet per second which I looked up online just some, you know, Nerf velocities. And Nerf velocities for those single blasters, those little blasters that I have, like this guy, those are typically in the 30 to 45 miles per hour range. So I felt really good about this calculation and that it worked out decent. Um, what would be really nice is if I took this to a chronograph and tried to measure how fast it was moving on my uh, actual electronic chronograph. So that's next. So, um, okay. There's, there's a sample calculation, and here's what I want you guys to try and do is build a ballistic pendulum. So let's watch this overview. All right, so here's my ballistic pendulum setup. So I have my pendulum. Okay, it's connected with two strings, a front string and a back string. There's the anchor points. Um, I've got tissue paper in it to help catch the projectile. Right, sorry for the color combo, green and yellow don't look that good together. Um, the Ducks did just lose their basketball game tonight, but the Beavers won theirs yesterday, so we're playing in the Elite Eight. And let's see, this is my wife's uh, quilting kind of layout. I think it's for cutting fabric patterns or, um, but anyways, you don't have to have one of these. You can also use just a regular ruler, meter stick, or some other reference object um, to help you figure this out. And maybe we can talk about some cool pixel counting technology or stuff you can use um, on your on your laptop to, to figure out how high this thing moves. Okay, but yeah, you're basically going to shoot a projectile in here. And with conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, you should be able to determine the projectile's velocity. So that's the goal. 